Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I've been involved in embedded system over the past uh, 20 years. What I will cover over the next 15 minutes, I'll give you an overview of the intelligence edge, some of the trends, macro trends, economic trends, some of the challenges, the barriers, and what the industry is doing to take advantage of this opportunity. I will start, though, with giving you our view of what IoT is and what embedded edge is. Uh, it's a movement where familiar devices will be able to leverage the internet and its massive computing power of cloud computing. As devices get connected, get smarter, they'll be able to take advantage of all the power generated at the cloud and on the intelligent edge. What's driving this movement? The maturity of connectivity, the intelligence, new architecture at the edge, the optimization done at the edge, the intelligent sensors, and the effect will be felt everywhere across many industries. So let's start looking first at some of the trends. You know, we will start with the first major macro trends is accelerating urbanization. You've seen, all of us have seen many reports from analysts, uh, different, different sources uh, predicting that most of us, the majority of us, will live in cities or around cities within the next 10 years. That's going to put a tremendous pressure on the cities, on the infrastructures of the cities, to create smarter things, much more efficient things. That's the drive for smarter transportation, smarter energy consumption, smarter banking, and this is fueling innovation to support this macro trend. The second major trend is around the aging population. I'll give you just a reference of the Americas. It's expected that the number of people over the age 65 will double over the next 10 years. So that's putting a huge amount of pressure to stabilize the cost of healthcare. So through that pressure, through that need, a lot of innovation has happened over the past 10 years. We've seen it from the major healthcare companies to startups that are popping everywhere in this field, trying to take advantage of this opportunity. And the objective is very simple, is trying to control this cost that's expected to be close to 30% of the GB, GDP within the next 10 years. The third area, the third macro area is around our environment. You hear a lot protecting our environment, protecting our natural resources, uh, saving energy. And you see a lot of investment in the transportation industry related to increased efficiency, the electrification of cars. But energy efficiency, as we've heard even from our speaker before, is not just around transportation, it's around everything, around water, energy, uh, the push to save electricity all across all industries. So let's look at the traditional way of how the embedded systems operated. So you had devices at the edge collecting data, sending it through a gateway, and then up uh, to the cloud. All the intelligence has been happening at the cloud. Uh, all the intelligence, all the action were coming from the cloud. So what does that do? What is the ch challenge with such a, uh, a system? So many challenges, and the challenges are coming from the needs. There are certain applications that demand 
a real-time operation. I need to act now. Some, with all of these billions of devices connected, it could potentially create a bandwidth issue as well. So I can't wait to have my time to connect and communicate. Other areas are driving us towards taking decision on the spot at the edge. So what did this do? It created a huge need for a decentralized distributed intelligence model. So now you have a push innovation that is distributing this intelligence from the cloud to the gateways, to the edge, down to even our day-to-day -day devices. And what this system is doing is not only distributing intelligence to the edge, but it's also learning and continuously optimizing across all three stages of the platform, from the edge all the way to the cloud. All of this is, sounds fantastic. Uh, the architecture is there, the vision is there, the expertise is there to put this in place. Though it presents itself with some challenges and at the same time some opportunities for all of us. And we will, over the next uh, 10 minutes, we'll discuss some of the challenges, how collaborative efforts across all the industries coming to address these challenges to take advantage of this opportunity. So we'll start. Again, this is not, uh, you know, I'm here, I'm speaking on behalf of a semiconductor company. Uh, but this is not a semiconductor a challenge or opportunity. The whole industry is presented with this challenge. And it's impressive, the collaboration across all segments of the industry, from, again, from us, from the semiconductor places to the cloud provider, to the telecom industry, to software vendors, to our distributors, uh, to uh, many, many different opportunities and innovation is coming from all across the technical uh, community. Some of the challenges is, and the opportunities again, you have sensors everywhere now. So the semiconductor industry, for example, are investing in innovative sensors that are creating the nervous system of this intelligence edge. Now, everything is being sensed, we're being watched, cameras are all around us, we're being taped. So some of these challenges is how to deal with all of this, uh, what to do with this. The nervous system is there, but what do we do with this and how do we responsibly manage this opportunity? This is all being enabled by many opportunities and many innovations across our industries. So technology investment in providing low power at the edge. You have also AI innovation from across many startup focused on cer certain industries, cer certain verticals all to support this opportunity. Security investment from the cloud to the silicon is being at the forefront of this innovation and finding solution to address these security issues. Smaller form factors to be able to fit this intelligence into the edge, supporting our day-to-day -day activities. And all of this is coming together, supporting different industry from wellness to transportations uh, to industrial and so on. So I'm going to mention a couple of, a couple of uh, players you know, here, the cloud. We've seen uh, there is a very active investment and development from our cloud partners in uh, providing or acquiring solutions for real-time operating systems to enable intelligence at the edge. I just want to mention a few. You've seen there publicly, uh, public, in the public domain. We've seen recent investment in this space, developing RTOS or acquiring RTOS capabilities from 
you know, AWS, Microsoft, uh, Google, this is a very, very significant move toward enable, enabling intelligence at the edge. I'll mention another industry here. It moves, it moved now. Connectivity. So five years ago, if you remember, we were all uh, juggling which connectivity uh, should we invest in and so on. Now this is behind us. There are many connectivity solutions. Many and they all have a place, they all have an application, they all, all have an opportunity and everything can be abstracted uh, from the users. Uh, so whether for short range to long, long range, uh, connectivity is no longer a concern. Uh, connectivity is there to support the enablement of intelligent edge. I'll mention investments uh, similar to how we mentioned on the semiconductor side, we mentioned on the cloud guys. Now some of the telecom guys, you know, we hear a lot of 5Gs. 5G is expected to make a significant a change in enabling intelligent and distributed and connected world to solve some very fundamental needs to this intelligence. Faster speed, higher capacity, lower latency. And again, if you remember, some of the challenges presented four or five slides before were related to, I need to act now, I can't wait, so bandwidth, real time, etc. So 5G could and will be a key enabler in a supporting intelligence at the edge. Now, we've looked at, so far, the macro driving forces. We've looked at some challenges. We have looked at uh, the opportunities. We have looked at some key industry leaders, wh what they are doing to address uh, these things. Now, let's bring some use cases of how this whole ecosystem of industry is coming together to provide solutions uh, to in real cases. And here we, I picked, just to give you an idea, I picked uh, one from appliance, from the consumer side, I picked a couple from the industrial side, and I picked uh, one from the automotive side, uh, just uh, random, just so we can feel and touch where this is all uh, going. Here, just mention a case on the, uh, on the home appliances. It, the use cases, uh, the industry used to go, I'm, I wanna go buy a fridge, I go to a local or a national distributor, I pick my fridge, I buy it. So the, the interaction has been between me and that distributor. Now, with this intelligent node, the opportunity created could open the door for, for example, the appliance makers or the consumer makers uh, to have a connection directly with the consumer where they will understand the consumer needs through the connectivity again. Uh, they will understand the co uh, consumer needs, creating a new opportunity for potentially a new stream of revenue. That new stream of revenue could come from services, could come from maintenance, uh, could come from uh, the ecosystem of providing, okay, I'm a fridge or I'm an oven, I'm gonna connect you to the local store, I know the recipe you're gonna buy, I know what's in this recipe, I will purchase it for you, so I will plan your whole week, your whole week's dinner, I will purchase it for you, I'll connect you to right. So there's an opportunity here for service-oriented engagement with the consumer that was not there prior to this intelligence edge. Industry, the industry is, will significantly take advantage of the intelligent edge. And I'll give you an example here of motors, anything it could be. So you have sensors placed on the motor, they, monitor, they can monitor the vibration of the motor, they can monitor the temperature, they can monitor the magnetic field against an optimized use, user case. And any changes from this could trigger a, an alert, a change, an action, all done at the edge, saving the factory, the technician time when called on to address the situation. And all of this will be enabled by providing intelligence 
at the edge. Another, another case is related to, uh, th again, the smart industry. Here we take an example of an elevator. Uh, optimizing uh, the consumer satisfaction with making sure, anticipating a failure, uh, calling on the technician, uh, having the parts ordered, all of this without anybody or any person uh, triggering that action. Another example of automotive. I mean, we've seen all the coverage on automotive, having sensors on all major parts in, in our car, anticipating a failure, ordering parts, maybe in the future going and fill the gas for us so we don't have to do it ourselves, as long as they don't take the fun out of driving because I, I enjoy still driving my car. But the opportunity is there to, to take advantage of the intelligence at the edge. And transportation is a significant industry and the opportunity is tremendous there. Another one also in smart industry, machine vision and so on. So the examples are ample. The opportunity for all of us is great. Now the execution is still short of the expectations. Even though the technology, I believe AI, intelligence at the edge today is what connectivity was probably five or seven years ago. We are still at the beginning of implementation, but there's no doubt about the intelligence adv edge advantages that will bring to all of us. Now, we want to make sure all of this is great. The industrial area will uh, take advantage of these significant improvements. But how about, how about us consumers? So we're being watched, we're being uh, taped, we are sending information about DNAs every day, so the, the data is there. So we have to make sure we act responsibly as an industry to make sure we keep the consumer trusting in what the data is doing. We have to be transparent in our approach so we don't lose the consumer. And if without the data, the fuel for this intelligence at, at the consumer side will not succeed. So as an industry, we have a responsibility to make sure we are transparent in how we are using the data and the benefit of using this data to the consumer. So with that in mind, I want to leave you with intelligence as distributed intelligence is here to stay. And I'm, I was very proud of our engagement collectively all together over the past five years with innovators, with startups, all collaborating together, trying to take advantage of this opportunity. And I thank you for listening this morning. Thank you.